Algebra 1, number 3.3a. In this unit, we're going to talk about addition and multiplication property of equality being used together. We're going to be applying both properties to solve an equation. So, to solve some equations, we may need to use both the addition and multiplication properties of equality together. When we see an equation such as 2x plus 5 equals 13, it's easier to get rid of that plus 5 first then worry about the multiplication of the 2x. Use the addition property of, equali of equality first, and then use the multiplication property of equality, multiplying by the reciprocal, to get rid of the 2. And we'll finally isolate that variable to one side of the equal sign. Now remember to check the description of this video for helpful uh, video links, okay? So if you don't know what something is or you're not quite sure about these, the links to them will be in the description, okay? So, if we need to solve 2x plus 5 equals 13, we can use the addition property of equality first to write an equivalent equation. So because it says plus 5, we're going to do minus 5 on both sides of the equation. That's going to make this portion of it equal 0. See? We now have that portion of it equaling 0. So we have 2x plus 0 equals 8. 13 minus 5 is 8. See? So now we've got 2x equals 8 because we don't need to write that plus 0, do we? He's just kind of in the way. And we use the multiplication property of equality by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient. Do you remember what the coefficient is? He's the guy in front of the variable, right? And if that variable goes away, then he's just a standalone number, isn't he? All right? So the coefficient's the number in front of the variable. So this 2 is the coefficient, all right? We need to find its reciprocal. We can write 2 as 2 over 1 as a fraction, and its reciprocal be, would be 1 over 2. We'd flip around the numerator and denominator, see? Look at my little cartoon guys here, see? You just flip around the numerator and denominator. So the reciprocal of a half is 2 over 1. The reciprocal of 2 over 1 is a half. See? It's just flipped around. All right? So we need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this coefficient, this 2. All right? And it's 1 half. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equal sign by half. And when we do, we can put a little 1 underneath our whole numbers, can't we? So that we can multiply straight across easier. We get 1 times 2 is 2 over 2 times 1 is 2. And then on this side of the equal sign, we get 8 over 2. Now what we have to do is simplify. And remember, the multiplicative identity property says that this 1 is a 1x. We don't need to write the 1. That's our buddy, the invisible 1, isn't it? So we have x equals 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4. See? Make sure to check it to make sure that your math is correct because they're not all going to be this easy. We're going to come across some that are really difficult and you're going to need to check it to make sure the math was correct, especially if the numbers were bigger. So here's our equation, 2x plus 5 equals 13. We plug in x equals 4 into the equation. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 is 13. Yep, we did it right. All right, now what happens when we have a negative coefficient? Same thing. We add a negative 3 to this positive 3 using the addition property of equality so that this portion of the equation is going to be a 0. See that? It's a 0 pair. Plus 3 minus 3 makes a 0 pair. It's a pair of numbers together that make a 0. 15 take away 3 is 12. We end up with negative 4x equals 12. Now, we need to use the multiplication property of equality to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient. What's the coefficient? It's the number in front of the variable, the negative 4. And the reciprocal of negative 4 would be, if that's 4, negative 4 over 1 as negative 4, its reciprocal would be flipped around negative 1 fourth. Remember, reciprocals keep the sign. Being a reciprocal has nothing to do with positive or negative. It still keeps the sign that it had. So negative 4 as negative 4 over 1 is going to be negative 1 fourth. It stays negative. So now we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 fourth. You remember what happens when we multiply a negative to a negative? 
it makes a positive. So we've got negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4, and a negative 4 times a negative 1 is a positive 4. So we've got 4 over 4 again. That's that multiplicative identity property that our friend the invisible 1. And on this side, we get, we can do this, can't we? We can put a little 1 here. 12 times a negative 1 is a negative 12 over 4. When we simplify this, we get a negative 3. So now we get x equals negative 3. See? We didn't need to write that 1, but we need to make sure that we did it correctly, so we check it. So we write our equation, negative 4 plus 3 equals 15, and we plug in negative 3 where the x was. Negative 4 times negative 3 is a positive 12, plus the 3 is 15, 15 is 15, see? Now, we can also do this using division. Did you know that? It's much quicker. As we get good at doing these equations with creating zero pairs, we start to go faster and faster, and because multiplication is the inverse of division, we can use division to do this quickly and to skip some steps. So here's the first example we did, and here's that second example we did. All we have to do is have the equation 2x plus 5 equals 13, subtract the 5 from each side to create a zero pair, right? So that this is now gone, and we end up with 2x equals 8. We could divide both sides by the coefficient. Remember the coefficient's the number in front of the variable? We can just, instead of going through all this multiplying the reciprocal stuff, which is great if one of these is a fraction, that's perfect. If one of the um, rational numbers in our equation is a fraction, then multiplying by the reciprocal is just smooth because it just multiplies right into that fraction, doesn't it? But when we've got whole numbers, we could just divide by the coefficient. So we would divide by the 2. 2 divided by 2 creates a 1, right? That's our buddy, the invisible 1. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. x is 4. And we go a lot quicker, see? Even with the one we just did before, the 4x plus 3 equals 15, we start by creating the zero pair of plus 3 minus 3 so that we can cancel that out and get rid of it. And now 15 take away 3 is 12. We've got negative 4x equals 12. Just like we did up here, we had negative 4x equals 12. But then we had to multiply by those fractions, the reciprocal, didn't we? We could just divide both sides by the coefficient, that 4 in front of the variable, that negative 4. So we divide both sides by negative 4, and this becomes our buddy, the invisible 1, doesn't it? Because the numerator and denominator is the same. And 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. We get negative 3, just like we did up there, see? So division can help us skip a couple steps, but make sure you know what you're doing. If you're trying to skip steps when you're still not quite sure what you're doing, you can make a mistake. That's why I said as we get good at doing these, we can skip steps, okay? So that would be using both of the properties together, all right? Now, in the next video, 3.3b, we're going to talk about collecting and combining like terms and using both of these properties together when we've got a crazy equation with lots of terms in it, okay? I hope I'll see you there. Bye.